Hi, this is Stream337. Hey there, Nui. I uh, was a few moments late because I forgot to change the stream title, and that's like one thing that I um, can't forget to do because if then I, it, well, I guess I could forget to do it, but then I have to go back and fix the stream title before I export the VOD or it causes even more problems. So let me get the uptime thing going. One of the many things that I want to automate is this uptimer thing. Uh, three, four, start. Maybe that's something I think about working on today, is automating some of the stream management. Because I think my stream helper could just do that. Let me think about that. How hard would it be to do that? Well, right now my stream helper doesn't really know when the stream exactly starts because I'm not using webhooks. I'd have to learn webhooks first. I guess I could be researching webhooks. <laughs> really, if I just had one button that starts everything, then it could start the uptime thing, the stream helper, and OBS all at once. Possibly. Tools to help automate starting up the stream or doing other stream management tasks. Hey there, Toulouse. How are you doing? Good morning. Maybe some OBS hooks. Yeah, I think OBS does provide hooks. So maybe I'd just do it in the stream helper app that I have. It would start up. Hey there, APIs and IPAs. <laughs> I like that name. How are you today? Although I'm, I'm not partial to IPAs, that's a very clever the very clever name you have there. C17R, how are you doing? All right, I'm still trying to decide and list what am I going to work on today. You don't like it either, but yeah, that's a clever name. I like it. I'm definitely going to work on items stack splitting. This came up yesterday that it would be nice to be able to launch a game system event when, when you pick up an item. Oh, I should also put along with that uh, launching system event when, well, when a trigger I need to reevaluate the trigger system. Reevaluate the trigger components. Launch system event when a trigger is stepped on. You don't mind just IPs, but it seems like everyone is too X3, X, etc. It's a little bit much for you. It's just, I don't know if it's still a thing, but what was it, a year and a half ago when um, I would drive down to San Diego all the time? It was um, it was just a thing. You every bar there would just be everything would be IPAs. I'd be like, Ugh, I just don't like IPAs. <laughs> Why can't they have just more non IPAs, please? All right. Looking back at the other tasks here. Oh yeah, in-game statistics. That would be maybe nice to think about. How would I manage that? I'm not going to put that on today because I need to think more about that. Hey there, develop it. How are you today? Okay, let me look back at the last few streams to look for things that are marked to do. Oh, have the look command do something for NPCs. Yeah, let me put that on here. Uh, today's plan. Integrate uh, look command system. Look command in game systems to have look possibly uh, trigger game trigger trigger events and or dial events dialogues and or um, how about events and or dialogues events. An event could just be to, to do a chat message, right? So events would cover everything that I would need other than dialogues, I think. Finally, a stream you can understand. Adam, his stream has been too much for you? Yeah, uh, I was thinking yesterday 
In fact, I put something in Adam's chat yesterday, but the chat was going flying by so fast. What he was doing yesterday is like requiring a bit of microprocessor architecture background, and that's third, fourth year undergraduate college level stuff. So lots of things like understanding how a CPU works, registers, the uh, memory mapped I.O., um, how um, old old school uh, displays were drawn, interrupts, all that stuff. And it was just a, it was very, very dense, the information. Like Zorkenheimer said, he compressed, I think he said like five weeks of his own learning in, down into five hours. So 7x compression of information. <laughs> So a, a bit much. I was able to follow along because I've had that back. I've had that background in in uh, microprocessor design and architecture and that kind of thing. I've done assembly language. I made it. I made an assembler at one point for the x eighty six, um, just for fun. And that's a, yes, that's what kind of nerd I am. So anyway, like I I know I know about assemblers and linkers and assembly language and registers and, and you know that kind of thing. So it was not not as hard for me, but I could imagine like someone who knew hadn't known any of that be it would be it would, it would be like an information overload i was trying to help but yeah it's like how do you bridge that gap you have some knowledge of the super nintendo that's cool yeah having having a little bit more knowledge uh would will help you not get lost when you get that information done looks like my friend just ascended the tower i don't know what he's staring at but he's staring off into space Hey, kitty. Kitty. Hello. He's like, why did you just snap your fingers? Hey there, Greg. How are you doing? All right. I'm right now just collecting tasks to work on today. So that idea. Those are the recap video stuff. I fixed that bug. Oh, that's another thing I can do today. Uh, I wanted to do that. Probably after all this stuff. Uh, deploy latest code into production. Because I had a bunch of fixes to raft library stuff too that I want to put into production. I fixed that bug. Uh, that's too big of an idea today. That's a little bit too close to what I was doing yesterday that I was getting, getting sick of. The chat window, yeah, that's that's difficult stuff. I'm gonna pick some of the easier things. Maybe this, although it would be hard for me to test it without having the test environment linked to Twitch. And that's really, really, really low priority. Hi hey there, smack in the box. Good morning to you. Just uh, coming up with a list of tasks for today. I should put that in the current task, shouldn't I? So collecting ideas for what to work on today. It's sort of a miscellaneous day. Miscellaneous tasks day. Um... That's not really that big an issue, that one right there. Tasks make tasks. Yeah, it's to rein them in. I was working on bugs after the stream yesterday, uh, uh, Wednesday, and then yesterday too, to sort of catch up, because if we look at the issues, let me look at it myself. There are a lot of issues in here, 158 open issues. I did get to a bunch of them yesterday. I got to eight of them. So I could I could easily catch up if I did like eight to ten a day for like a few weeks. So I'd like to uh, you know, work on some of these today. Maybe I'll keep that up because I'm going to look at that in a second. Oh, did I miss something here? This is a difficult one I don't want to do today. <clears throat> This one, maybe? That's already in GitHub, too. Yeah, it fix up the ignore list. 
Possibly. Let's, let's say possibly. Possibly. Uh, work on improving the profile panel, especially the chat ignore list. <clears throat> Can you focus on a couple categories? Sure, I could. I could I probably, uh, we'll spend a, a bunch of time on just a few of these. I end up generally having a lot of things on the list and only getting to maybe the first half, if any. I, I'd rather have tasks I don't get to rather than run out of things to do in the middle of the stream. If I, if I get to only part of these and then I have some leftover ones, that kind of helps me for like the stream later this afternoon or for Monday. I, I already have some things I could work on. Yeah, I know what you're. I know what you mean. Smack in the box. Actually, that's what I prefer to do. So a lot of the time in the past, I've like, for example, this this stream three two six right is all about the GM items panel, and that was a multi day thing. And I, I I love those because it gives me a focus on something to work on. And then the next week after that, it was raft debugging, and that was for three days. So. It's just this week, for some reason, I haven't had like one, like one or two or a small m number of categories that, that I really feel like working on. It's more like, I don't know what, in fact, I asked both of my kids that I took to school, uh, what do you think, what do you guys think I should work on today? Like, I, I don't know what to work on today. Maybe continue with the discord bat. That was something totally different. That's a, that's a good idea. Actually, my daughter said, why don't you let chat vote on it? What do you guys think about that? I didn't know what to think because... Like, I don't know if chat really cares what I work on. <laughs> Mob rule. <laughs> Building NES Rob. <laughs> hey there, thank you for that follow. Uh, I don't know. I could work on the Discord bot. I need to, I, could, I guess I could go look to see what state I left it in. I want to get to some of these today. So maybe we'll all split this into definitely. I want to look at that and I want to look at those two. I would definitely want to look at. And then let's have a possibly. Th that was down here, right? Possibly. And then I can remove this prefix. Now, what do I do with these other ones? Ah, uh, yeah. Definitely want to... Okay, yeah, so I know what I want to do. I want these ones in... How come I can't drag them now? Drag! Now it's dragging. That was weird. I could drag... Okay, got it. I got it working. Uh, I want this one in here. I want to at least do these three. Hey there, Nabschen. You would like me to pet the cat? No, no, you just highlighted that. I need to pet the cat though. Stretch. Sure, stretch. And hey there, Manes. Manes, Manes. I'm not sure if it's Manes or Manes. I'll say both. <laughs> uh, yeah, while I think about this, let me give the cat a pet. A free pet for the cat. With the ah, oh, like then it's a manes. Okay, got it. Got it. All right. Stretch. So I guess I'm just changing the stream title again. Or am I? Eh. I'll just leave it. I'll put I'll put this in here. Work on Discord bot. Sure. Okay, so those are the things I want to do today. Good. We have, I know what I'm going to be doing. So I definitely want to get to these two. I want to figure out what's going on with this bug here. I'm going to try to reproduce it and fix it. Stretch. Debugging. 
well yeah debugging problem where player still sees an item that was removed there we go hey there Rasubaka how are you doing today TGIF okay so this happened yesterday that maybe I can demonstrate it in game because I bet I bet I can I bet no one's picked up the key that I left in the game let's see let's go play the game for a little bit all right, I gotta take um, the boat back though. Oh, develop it's on the boat. We'll get on the boat here. Currently on the roller coaster boat. How did my day start? Eh, not so good. I'm getting it's it's doing better. I hate days where I don't feel motivated and I don't have a a specific category of 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 goals. So I feel I'm feeling better now that I have some goals set. Oh, there's some monsters here. We must do battle. Oh, there's some money. It's my money now. George, help! That's right, I changed the drop rate so that those slimes always drop things now. You found the boat yesterday, C-17 hour? Yeah, but did you find the in-game world event? Let's see if anyone's found it. Nope. See that key there? My key now! <laughs> I found the rusty iron key. Yes, I'm full-time on my project. Uh, my other job is I'm a chauffeur. Smack in the box for three younger humans. I am a stay-at-home dad and, and I have three kids and they all need to be driven to school and driven home. And they all three go to different schools now. So I do a lot of driving. I also do all the shopping. Uh, most uh, I need to do more of the cleaning. I'm, I'm not so good at that. Oh, I missed the boat. But yeah, it, 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 it works out to be like, I work for 20 hours a week on this. I do maybe, I don't know, 10 hours of kid-related stuff. And with the other 10, I should be doing, like, more household stuff. I'm, but, yeah, my wife works full-time. All right, so now that I have this key, so we put this game, this game system in place yesterday so that if I use this key, the box opens up, and I can look into the box and take the money out. But do you see the problem there? The key is still there. It actually has disappeared. If I drop this money into here... The key vanishes. The key should have vanished earlier than that, so that's the bug. Let me collect my gold together. So yeah, approximately an hour from now, there'll be an in-game event where the box closes and the key gets regenerated. Yeah, it's some kind of update issue. So I'm going to try to reproduce that in the test environment right now. Let me look at the script. Actually, hold on. Would it be safe? It would not be safe to just synchronize the scripts now because the way I set up the script yesterday, it was, um, I forget the name of it now. Uh, I need that window. Let's look for it. World event loot box. This is it. I need to make sure that this is only uploaded to the production server. How did I do this before? I think I put it into the configuration of the game. Uh, well. Maybe for now I disable it. Yeah. I'll just disable it for now. So this will do a re... Uh, Comment the whole thing out? Sure. Let's comment the whole thing out. All right, and then let me start synchronizing the scripts. Okay. Think. Go to... Stage. And then do dot dot... Actually, it doesn't matter what, what directory I'm in. It was... Uh, was it... It wasn't wsync. Was it W scripts? Yes, W scripts. Y 
Yeah, okay. It's been a while since I updated the test environment scripts. Okay, but nothing broke. That's good. All right. So I just didn't want this script to run in the test environment. I want to look at what actual um, Lua actually takes the key away, though. That's this use loot box key. So it's... Oh, I'm being raided. Mr. Halsey! Oh, Mr. Halsey, thank you for the raid. How are you doing? How was your stream? And hey there, uh, C... I mean, uh, 715209? I'm uh, debugging something in the game today. First off, and then later I'll be uh, working on st splitting item stacks in my game and then pushing this into production. And then, uh, yeah, I need to put some more work into the Discord integration. But it's work on it's work on Discord integrations, and uh, I'm working on a library that will let my game connect to Discord. And um, it's not too far along. I need to put some more time into it. So it's time trying to fix a bug. It won. Oh no. Oh no. Tomorrow's round two. Best of three. <laughs> I'm sure you'll come out on top, Mr. Halsey. Okay, this is what's triggering it. So I was demonstrating that earlier. There's a world event now in my game where once an hour a key will drop somewhere in the world. And if you pick it up and you use it when you're standing next to a certain box, it will um, open the box and show the box is open and destroy the key. This part, it does destroy the key, but the, the, the key st still shows up in your inventory, apparently. It's, it's a, an update is missing. So I need to track this down. Um, I'm going to try to recreate this just by running a Lua command. I need, I need a window, though. I need an incognito window. And log in. Remember me. And let me get an F12 open here. Log in. Bad password. Try again. Alright, must have mistyped. Okay, I'll just sit here wherever I am. And uh, go to the admin screen. Go to where my player is. And... How do I want to do this? Just give my character an item and then just destroy it? How about I just take this firework and duplicate it and then put it into the inventory in this slot? Okay, and then let me um, find out what... So it's Entity 42171. So it's there. What happens if I just remove it now? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that the bug is, is, is that when we destroy an entity, it doesn't know... It doesn't update the uh, player's inventory. Well, it should have updated the player's inventory. Let me look. Why did it give me that dialogue again? Oh, that's interesting. That's the second bug. I have no idea how that happened. All right, let me look at, make sure it's not the reference. Yeah, see the reference has been updated to null. To null. But we actually still show something here. That means probably if I look at this screen, yeah, it's gone from this screen. Not from here. Okay, so let me try to recreate it in the in the test environment. A box bug, yeah. There's a, a mechanism in the back end that w it, when it detects that something has changed in the player's inventory, it's supposed to send the player a message giving them a, a refresh of their inventory, and it's not apparently not happening. Actually, I should confirm it here by looking at the network connection. Yes. So there's where we, where we were given the um, extra firework. Right here. So if I look at the previous equipment message, it'll it'll be missing from here. So missing there. But then it shows up here. And then we get this chat message saying we've obtained it. So there's actually two problems. It should have said we lost it, and it should have given... So we should, we're missing two messages, a chat message and an inventory message. Whereas... Uh, oh, I didn't have F12 open for this guy. So we won't have seen it. 
but yeah, um, we will have seen um, it disappear from there. I don't need that one, actually. Okay, so let me set up a where I think the bug is. Or should I just look for the bug? It would be in the executor, right? It would be in um, on modify, well, on ECS uh, destroy entity. Yeah, that function. Everyone's bug hunting today. So, 715209, if we didn't hunt the bugs, they would overwhelm us. I have 158 open bugs, and these, uh, actually it's not showing it anymore. These eight alone I fixed yesterday, so if I didn't work on those, yeah, they just accumulate. 158 open issues, they just keep piling up. I guess the good news there, or the good, the bright side of, the, of it is there were 121 more that I've, that I've fixed since they were opened. Servers don't have cache control for the assets, so these font requests, uh, it should be. The assets should have cache control. Uh, where would we see that? I would see that in the requests here, right? Uh, anybody remember where that is? Oh, it's if I show all, right? Oh yeah, what the heck? What's, why is it requesting the background endlessly? What the heck? When did that happen? Has it been doing that and I just never noticed? Okay, I hope that's not in production. Something is requesting the background assets over and over and over again. Uh, okay, th this on localhost there is no cache control, but I thought on S3 there was. How would I see that without leaking things? I guess I could look at that off screen. Oh, yeah, let me um, let me take a look off screen for a second. So uh, how would I do that? Yeah, I guess I I guess I can see it in Firefox here. And I'm going to go look at the network and show all. Yeah, so it's not a product it's not a production issue. Interesting. It, CloudFront should be caching it. I do see miss from from CloudFront though. What if I happens if I refresh? It still says miss. Why would it be a miss? It should be, CloudFront should be caching it. Weird. I know, so it, may, it might be something wrong in the CloudFront configuration. Computers don't lie, that's true. Well, I'm more concerned that uh, we're not getting um, a hit on CloudFront. It says miss from CloudFront for everything. Why would it be missing constantly? Like when I refresh again, why is it constantly missing CloudFront? Weird. I wonder if I did that. Maybe I turned off the caching stuff for some reason and then forgot to turn it back on. Okay, there's a hit from CloudFront for one of them. <laughs> one of them was cached. Wait a minute. They all say cached. 
Missed from CloudFront, but how how does it why does it say transferred cached? Oh, maybe it's the E tag. No, that's in the. Okay, I don't get it. Why would Firefox say it's cached? Cache. No cache information. Response. There's a response. <sighs> okay, I'll have to look into it. But um, before I push into production, I really do need to find out why this is endlessly um, requesting the background ping. For cache at the browser level, not the server level? Okay, so it's probably cache in the browser, but it shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening. So, what happens if I take my character and teleport him to a zone that doesn't exist? Uh, let's put him in um, zone zero. Go to zone zero, banishment. We've been banished. Okay, so it stopped the... Oh no, it's still requesting background ping. It shouldn't be. What if I reload now? Okay. And then uh, put him back here, I guess. Well, that's odd. Oh no, there it goes. Back on ping. Okay, so this takes pri priority over the other bugs. <laughs> so, uh, bu bug in endless requests for graphics assets. That takes priority. And then I also need to put in the notes, uh, check cloud front and S3 configurations to find out why uh, we're not getting more cache hits. What even is background? Background is this tile set here. So and so the fact that there are tiles here that need to be drawn, uh, we need to get the back the this this ping image. Thing is, it shouldn't it, it should already have gotten it, so why is it asking it again? What's this scale manager? Yeah, it, probably it's my code that's got a bug in that it thinks it keeps needing to get the get the graphics. for this window, right? I wonder if it's this inventory screen. What if I go to a different screen here? Oh, look at that. I think I know what it is. It's when it's on this inventory panel. There it goes, and if I switch to here, it stops. And it fetched avatars.ping. Oh, is it because this water is scrolling? It does say memory cache. Okay, so maybe it's not a problem because it's actually not hitting the server then. I don't understand this behavior. Is it... Why is it sometimes... looking it up and sometimes not? So now it's not doing it. Yeah, I'll I'll include that when I when I do the research the cache control. Oh, there it goes again. Save from memory cache. I think it's uh, I keep going to the wrong window. I think it's that it this is changing. So this is re React is re-rendering this and it's re-looking it up. It's really funny though, it only sometimes does it. Huh. Yeah, I think scale manager, I'm guessing it's part of um 
of phaser. Yeah, it's phaser. Time step, request animation frame. So these requests are probably for these background images. And I guess, I don't know why it's going back to the browser, but it's it's not going to the server. It's being served locally by the by the um by the browser. These ones are going out to the server though, right? These yeah, what's express? I'm guessing this is internal to the browser. It's it's satisfying the request. That's weird. I wonder if that's why it keeps requesting it. Is the original request say don't cache it? I I, I know why it does that. That's because when we're in the, when we're in the local environment, if we were to change the image, we would want it to to show up different. Yeah. So it's the when it when it hits Node.js, it's like don't cache it, right? Okay. So I okay that that sort of makes sense to me. But I should never actually see it go and hit the server. There should always be memory cache. Hmm. Yeah, this is also hitting the... Why does it say it's actually transferred, though, over the network? This doesn't make sense. If I click that it says it transferred some bytes over the network when i look at it though this is what i was seeing for when it was in hitting the memory cache it has background don't request background the request has no initiator data <laughs> Okay. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to assume that it's it's because this is, keeps re-rendering here on a timer. But it's the same image so it's just hitting the memory cache. Background is this is the tile atlas for the is this tile atlas right here. So it includes this water tile that I'm drawing in React here, and it's re-rendering the React on a on a um, a timer. So if I sh if I inspect that element, it's constantly re-rendering to change the background position of it to show that scroll effect, right? So the DOM is going to keep seeing this style change, and, but it's this, even though it's the same URL, I guess sometimes it's just saying, "Oh, I should fetch that again." I wonder if that's a browser bug, that it sometimes requests it, and then sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, that's one place where background is used. The other place is in phaser here for um, these for the, these tiles. So you say you assess animation between a few images, not do animation with fetch? Well, okay. How would I animate this uh, background any other way than this, though? I really, okay, maybe it's the fact that I've combined it into one style tag. Maybe I need to split the image away from the position. You have three request items, four and four to avatars. Is that normal? I don't know. I only reference these URLs from the uh, CSS and HTML and, and in phaser. So if those three things have bugs in them that they're fetching needlessly, then I don't know what I could do about that. Yeah, I don't know what I could do other than maybe remove the background image URL into us uh, into the CSS as a is a different um class or something. Do with image, not a div. 
The problem is that um, I don't want the entire image. I only want a small section of it. So this was the solution to that. The entire image looks like this. So how do you just pick out a 32 by 32 subset of the pixels and draw them in a, in a little box in HTML? The only way I know how to do it is with a background image with background position and setting the width and the height. But if you know of a better way, then I'd be open to, to trying that out. Um, that's only for tiles that show up in the inventory and stuff. For here, we're, we're using Phaser. And literally, I just tell Phaser, load the tile asset. And then if it asks for uh, across the network more than once, there's not much I can do about that. You should be able to do that with an image tag. I don't know how to do that with an image tag. I can look into that later. So uh, look into using an image tag rather than div with background image for uh, tiles drawn, drawn in React. I mean, I could, I could show you what it does. CSS for file request one. Uh, let me find out where this is done. Background image. I'm just not finding anything. Hold on, what? I literally see background image and it's not finding it. Okay, that's really weird. I would just look for background. Actually, I, I know where to go. It's tile.js. Oh, we're doing it through uh, that, through that way. Yeah. So here, here it is. I can change it to an image, but I'm not sure what that would solve. I um, then take the URL and make that what? <sighs> Leave the div. Okay. Move it to a CSS class. I, you know, I, let me do this later. I, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I want to move on. I don't think that that's actually a bug. And I, th I think it's something to do with either Phaser or, um, or, or the browser just hitting its own cache whenever I, whenever I re-render. Uh, let me look, yeah, let me look back into this one. The element re-renders. Yes. So let me put into here, um, okay, look. I still want to look into if can I do it that way, but also look into separating background image from uh, what's the one I'm actually changing background position in style, which is used to draw tiles in React. Okay, I'll look into that later. Uh, let me let me go back to this other bug. So undo that. Oh, wait a minute. That was, the, that was correct. Yeah. Okay. I never actually changed that. <laughs> so executor, right? Hey there, A squared. Oh, let me give some waves out to moves. And A squared. And... Zorok. Off screen stream. Yeah, I had to do that off stream, off screen a little bit ago because I didn't want to leak secrets. All right. Um, yeah, destroy entity. Kitte? Kitte needs pets? Okay. Definitely, Kitte needs pets. And I will give out a point to Tomoz.
camera where are you camera on there we go yeah thank you for the help there and also 715209 but um let me look into that later it was it's actually starting to frustrate me <laughs> mark complete we pet the kitty all right oh interesting there is no check to see if we need to update the player about it, looks like. Shouldn't we should though. Sure you did, 715209. You um were helping try to figure out what was going on with that image versus the div background stuff. Participating in chat counts. So this is collecting side of, well, this is collecting, what do I call this? Feedback to give to the, to the coordinator if certain kinds of things were removed. Yeah. So I guess I never really thought about this. So this this needs a whole new thing, right? What, where do we actually tell? It's a player inventory, right? Capture previous inventory. Yeah, that's how that's how we um, figure out what to tell the the player. Modify component. Okay. And if it's an item, yeah, I'm gonna want this kind of thing here. Right, this is the code that updates it if we like change the quantity of an item in the player's inventory. So I'm gonna need the same thing. So I'm gonna put a bookmark here. Let me clear this previous bookmark bookmark I had. And I'm gonna want this same thing in uh on e on ECS destroy entity. Down here somewhere. Okay, and then the test for this would be what? Test, source, executor tests, uh, entity management? Sure. Yeah. Player character movement reported in results, what? Why does this have to do with entity management? Okay, it seems out of place to me, but okay. I'm gonna take the test where we destroyed the entity, and we'll make it an entity. We'll make it an item that's in a player's inventory. So we're gonna call this entity. Well, player informed. Player informed about item uh, inventory item destroyed about destroyed inventory item. Okay. Let's name this one gold item. That's irrelevant. And I need a player too. The gold is what gets destroyed. Yeah, let's make a player here. Actually I need the I need to have one where the player has um inventory. Actually, shouldn't it go here? I think it should go here. Take that out and move it to here. So this is items. Yes. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Take that and paste it here. Create a player entity, have a previous state. I guess this will be empty and we'll put the gold in the second slot. Why not? Hey there, Karsten Pet. How are you doing? Next state will be that it's all null. Right, so kind of stealing from here. Exactly. This is what I really care about, right? Does this actually look at next state? Oh. Okay, so I don't need a next state. Okay, well, technically I do, because I want to check that. Okay, so I want all of this stuff to be the expectations we have down here. There we go. So, the store should have one in it. Just, the item doesn't exist anymore. The player has the next state. And the player's previous inventory will be, uh... Oh, for the item, it has to have a name. Oh, I have a... A convenient um, helper for that. Gold is add item gold. That means I don't need that. So gold is the name. This should say gold. There's one gold. Just a short visit. Notice in the VODs you had a challenge with digit width on the server listing. Found something for me. Oh, sure. You can post a link. Do you remember what Day, what um, stream number that was? Digit width. Oh, I remember what you're talking about. This right here. The width here. Sure. I like to build everything in CSS Grid. I'm trying. This is tabular data, so I'm trying to keep it in a table. Yeah. Let's take a look. Font, variant, numeric, tabular nums. It sets numbers as monospace, so they're pretty nicely aligned. Ooh, nice. Thank you very much, Karsten Pet. Let me put this on the list. So, uh... I'll just paste it there. Then I'll look at it later. Thank you. That's your first point? I'll give you a second point, then. Because no one should have just one point. Okay, I'm going to build this. So the executor returning the previous inventory of a player is a clue to the coordinator to say, well, do I need to tell the player that their inventory changed? And probably what's happening is the executor is not doing that for um, when we destroy something that's in their inventory. Yep, so it fails. And the failure is that previous inventory is null. Cool. All right. So let me fix it. Let's bookmark that. So I think I just need all of this and copy it. Actually, would it make more sense to, to, to extract this? Perhaps. Let me think about it. Yeah, because we could also be removing it from the container the player's looking at. So let me take this whole thing and make it a subroutine that we call. How to spend points fast? You can't spend them right now. <laughs> you can only accumulate them. You don't create bugs, you create a most happy accidents. But everything is that is it in... Yeah, uh, people would also call this a feature. We're fixing, we're changing features, Mr. Balrog. How are you doing today? Undocumented feature, yeah, exactly. 
Just a little tired. Sorry to hear that. Hope hope that uh, you get some get all rested very soon. Where to put this subroutine? I guess it doesn't really matter, so let's put it. Actually, here's one of the other helpers. Yeah, so let me put it right right below it. Paste. Uh Should we include the if part? Yeah, I think I will. So this is a static void. I don't want to see. Let's say account for possible inventory change. There, that's what I'm going to call it. All right, so it needs this results thing, right? In fact, it probably needs a lot of these same things. So let me just copy and paste it down here. Okay, we don't have a type. What's type? Type is... Actually, we're going to need both, both entity and type, aren't we? Okay. There's no container component. It's just um, entity and... Uh, standard string. Oh, it's been a while since I've done C++ already, <laughs> it seems. Type. And do we need previous item? Yes. Okay, and this is not const. This can be modified. Okay, do we, we not only need... Let's have it look up the um, component. So um, component will look up. Yeah, this. Actually, this get entity component type is a problem, isn't it? It's making a copy that we might not even need. Oh, wait. Uh, no, I do want to copy because we actually make a change here. Where is the change actually made? Right here. Yeah, so, um, but up here we don't need to make a change. So I can do it with a width. I'm doing it in the wrong place too. <laughs> do I need is main game state? No. Wait a minute, I'm, again, I'm in the wrong place. What am I doing? What am I doing? Entity type. Yes, yeah, so uh, we can uh, just have it return if it's not an item. And then this would be um, with entity component of type. Type entity visitor. What's the visitor look like? Components visitor. It takes one of these. And that's how we get component. To get well rested, you need to stop doing coatings in the evenings, you think? Or just set a consistent bedtime. That's what I'm trying to tell my kids. <laughs> You guys are tired? Well, try going to bed at the same time every night. Now it won't show you that you have deleted their item, so the user will suspect of nothing wrong. Yeah. So you can unlock Pet the Cat. <laughs> have you seen people use eight spaces for tabs? Yeah. I've seen people do eight space tabs. Okay, this needs to be a parentheses a semicolon. Did you go to bed at the same time every night about midnight? Maybe you're not getting in enough hours of sleep. I don't know. Madness. All right, so if it's an item and it has an item component... Actually, do I even need to check that? 
Yeah, because this will do the checking for me. So I don't need type. I don't need type at all. I just do that. Add component of type item. If it was an item, then get the previous items. This is a uh, item cache, yes. Get it's why are we getting the name and quantity? Oh, because we're gonna put that in the results, right? Do I need the quantity? I don't need the quantity, do I? Oh no, we do need the quantity. We're supposed to list the previous quantity that they had because then they'll turn into a chat message saying they lost it. So we get the holder if the if the holder is if it was held by someone and it's a player, right? Cache your previous. Okay, so this is correct. So I just need to call for this now and uh, let's comment it too. Hey there, Marco. I mean, this little uptime here, it's reasonably new. Not that new. I think I added it like a month ago? I think you might be right, Mr. Balrog. <laughs> I don't know why you, you knew that. Okay, record the items. Okay, so... Uh, Let's say, if the given entity is an item, is an item held by a player or a container, record the items in that player, players or containers inventory and add them to the previous inventory section of the given results object along with the list of players interested in... Uh, do we need to do that? Is that what this does? Oh, it does. Where is player... Oh, yeah, that's in the report. Yeah, that's all in this previous... Okay, so that's that's all correct. So we get components, and then we're going to get the entity. This is the entity... Ident this is the unique identifier of the entity. Which should trigger a capture... An inventory capture of any uh, for for uh, for its holder. And yes, this is the can. Yeah, this is exactly right. Okay, so I'm going to call this from down here. I guess yeah, we can just we can do that for that. Okay, so what are the arguments again? Components, entity. What's the entity number? It's just entity. Previous items results. And then this all goes away. And then the trick now is I get to reuse this from... Um, Slick fur! Eleven months? Wow, one more and it'll be in an entire year. Thank you for the resubscription. I I really appreciate it. I thought it was more than eleven months. Cause aren't you a founder? Hmm. Maybe there was a lapse. This is where we want to do it, right? Right here. Account for possible inventory change. Yep. Done. Uh, but you get to keep your founder badge. That was excellent. I don't have many founders because some of the, a lot of the people who first subscribed to me um, disappeared. I don't know where they went. Aw, thank you, Slickfur. I appreciate it. Yeah, there are others who subscribed to me and then, like, I never heard from them again. 
Thank you, Karsten Pett. And again, for the um, the link to help the CSS there. I appreciate that a lot. I'll hopefully learn from you very much. Yeah, see you later. Run the test. It passes now. Let me make sure that all of the tests in this suite pass still. Cool. All right, so then I'm going to make the release build of this thing and test it out. And that'll be, that'll be a bug fix. I want this one. By the way, building the game is much faster now that I have an M.2 NVMe drive and not a traditional hard disk. It's like maybe 10 times faster. Yeah, the first build running in here would have taken like at least a minute. And it's gonna, I think it's going to complete in 10 seconds or so. That doesn't tell me the total time, but that was pretty quick. Okay, so then um, that's going to break anyway, so might as well stop it. We're going to stop this. W update RVS and serve again. And the cluster should come back up, and we can test this again. Cluster coming back online. Online again, and then... Um, I bet you this is a bug. No? Why is it still subscribed to this... Oh, did I have it resubscribe if it reconnects? That was smart of me. <laughs> so this should just work right away. So if I, um, yeah, let's duplicate the firework. And I'm going to look at it from the player's point of view. And then I am going to simply destroy it. Destroy, yes. Oh, you lost it. Fixed. We fixed the bug. Check it in. So now we're accounting for a possible inventory change, and I'm not checking that one in. I am checking this in, though. So I can, like, undo that one. Yep, so fix bug. Uh, do I have this in GitHub? Did I bother to put it in here? Destroyed? Moving items into our African... Okay, that was a different bug. Hey there, Mamba Dev. How are you today? Item. Okay, yeah, I don't... I don't think I actually um, have an issue for it. I'm just going to say fix bug in notifying players about items lost. So if an item in a player's inventory was destroyed, the player was not being notified about it. Uh, fix this by capturing a player's inventory when an entity destroyed is found to be in a player's inventory. <laughs> there we go. Commit that. Fix that bug. All right. Oh, here's that bug again. Why does that pop up twice? Let me do this again. So I selected an item. I duplicated it. I pick it up and put it here. And then I hit destroy, yes. Oh, it's not dismissing the dialogue. Okay, yeah, I, um, I did some refactoring while I wasn't streaming, and I cleaned up a lot of the modals, but I guess apparently I put in a bug there. It's not dismissing the modal on yes for that, for the confirm action. Okay, let me, let me find that. That's probably a simple, a simple fix. Do that right now. Current task. Uh, deep, well, fixing issue where confirmation dialogues, well, yeah, modals. I'm trying to be consistent in the names. A dialogue, I mean to be a different kind of thing, so I'm going to call, calling them modals. Configuration modals are not always dismissed. 
Famous last words. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Let's see how hard it is. Uh, modal con confirm action. Goes to confirm action modal. The yes button does on confirm confirm action. Oh. It just dispatches the action, but it doesn't pop the dialogue stack. What did it used to do? I need to go back and look at the history for that. So this is stuff I did off stream yesterday. Uh, not get goo, I need get K. Yes, this stuff. What did I do to the um, that special modal? What source files is this? Confirm action dialog. Okay, here it is. Okay, what did it used to do? It used to do on confirm. What was on confirm? Confirm action. Oh, there was a special confirm action. Action. <laughs> okay, let me find where that is. That would have been in middleware, right? Apparently not. Notifications. Ah, here we go. I bet you what it was is in the modal reducer, we popped the stack for confirm action. I don't see it though. There's where we push it on the stack. Where do we pop it? Huh. Maybe it never did? That's weird. Indeed. I never did look into that one. Yeah, this was just, this action was just dispatching another action. But it never, it wasn't, where was it dismissing the dial, the modal? I think the only one that does that is called go back. Modal reducer. Modal go back. Go back, modal. When do we do that? Reflect dialog exited. If we were in the game dialog modal. Dismiss when we dismiss a modal. Oh, this is a special button. It could be in middleware somewhere, yeah. I wonder if, we're gonna, if I'm going to have the same issue if on like one of these dialogues where I hit edit and I hit submit. Now that... Dismissed it. On it calls because it calls on done, which does my modal go back. I'm just curious about how did this ever work. This will end up breaking out of the dialogue simply because you get disconnected, right? Let me confirm that. So new new private window, I guess. Actually, what am I doing? I can just do an incognito window here. I can just log out of this, yes, and then new account, um, Joe. I have read it. Yes, I'm not a I'm not a robot. Sign up, and then um, delete my account, please. Delete. Actually, does the go back work? Yeah. Uh, I don't need 
delete that. Let's just delete my account. Yeah, so it does escape the, the modal that way. And this also just goes back to... It must be when we lose our connection, it just dismisses all dialogues. Hey, I play poker badly. How are you doing today? On Radon 90, I didn't say hi to you either. And Slickfur. I didn't wave to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> My stream helper is coming to tell me that I've missed some people. Okay. I expected to see that here. But it just does on confirm, and on confirm just does dispatches the confirm action. It doesn't do it doesn't go back. So what did the modal reducer look like before then? Maybe it never really dismissed it correctly. It does push it, it does, when it goes into the, the confirm action, it does push it on the modal stack. Okay, what other middleware were touched here? Is that, there's that. Yeah, I don't know how, how it actually worked before. Well, let me just fix it. <laughs> Uh, the, um, the way to fix this, I think, oh, what, I'm looking right at it. There it is. This action doesn't exist anymore. It shouldn't. That's it right there. So I never changed the code. Uh, that and that. Yeah, so it doesn't exist anymore. So we need to do that, um, I guess in the dial, in the modal itself. Yeah. So it should do this. Go back and and run and run the confirm action. This doesn't happen anymore. Okay. So now if I like add a new Did I never fix that? Oh, uh add doesn't work unless I have a position selected. I remove yes okay fixed it so how long did that take a squared it took seven minutes probably a simple fix is seven minutes a simple fix maybe thank you for the follow by the way i appreciate that i appreciate all the follows i hope to make the stream interesting and people following hopefully is a good sign that it's interesting if it's not you wouldn't follow i guess okay so uh fix what do I call this? Just a bug? Really what I want to say is it's a uh, regression. Fix regression in confirm action dialog. So pop the modal stack when uh, before dispatching the confirm action. Yes. It wasn't too complex, no. I didn't, it didn't feel that it would be too complex. Can you s disable that add button when you don't have something selected? Probably. That's one, of the, that's one of the many tiny things that I probably should do. I disable the refresh, but I don't disable the add. Actually, I wonder what it does now if I hit add. Does it do anything at all in Redux or, or others? If I hit add, what does it do? It calls add entity. And it doesn't go anywhere. Probably because there's a check. There's a check here probably that says there's no, yeah. If there's no selected position, don't do anything. Yeah, so we should, shouldn't dispatch it at all, right? If, if we're close enough to where that um, other button is, refresh. 
Yeah, I can just find what do we use to disable the refresh button. Refresh, refresh. Where are you? There we go. I this is even simpler then. On add entity. Okay, so that's the on submit entity. All right, this form here. So there's a submit button. Here it is. Type submit. Disabled is no selected position. I think I just fixed it. There we go. So I have to have a position selected for add to work. Unselected position. No add button. And I I could I could be cool about it and I even have a pop up if I wanted, right? Let me, let me uh, do it with style here. How 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 did I do the pop ups before? That was like in the ticketing screen. I did um, on a ticket screen. Maybe not as an admin. Maybe as a normal player. Yeah, this is disabled because. This is disabled because. Right, a tooltip. Tooltip. Tooltip time. Selected position. Yeah, so let's put that here. Tooltip disabled if no selected position. This is disabled because no position is selected. And then how do how is that used? That's a data tip on, oh, do I, do I really need to be outside the button? Okay. Yeah, so I um, wrapped a button in a div with a data tip to do that. Button disabled if no selected position. Uses that data tip. And the disabled is this guy. And then I say, um, that's that. And I don't need the disabled. Don't need that. Is that... Oh, there's a label prop. Let me do it the right way. Um, it was with children, right? Children. In JavaScript. Yeah. Children. Children is a a special prop you get when uh, you do. Um, things inside of the tag like that. Ticket is not defined. Where did I say ticket? Oh. Um. That's what it should be. And then I probably need to um, pull in the um, React tooltip. There we go. It's not working. Oh, I, there was another thing you had to do. Um, you had to actually call it in a hook to rebuild. I remember that. So, like, put it right here. And uh, yeah, I need the effect hook. See, so the tooltips are need to have a little bit of 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 boilerplate, but not too badly. So now there's a, this is disabled because no position is selected. Yay. Select a position and they're no longer tooltip or enabled. So let's check that in. Starting to explore, you got stuck at the sword giver, trying to move with the arrow keys and the mouse and no go. Oh, how did you get stuck? Maybe you are still talking to him? When you're in a dialogue, you won't be able to move. So the fact that you... 
didn't understand why you were stuck at first, I need to accept that as feedback that the user experience could be improved. I need to keep trying to work on it so that people don't get confused like that. Yeah, so maybe there ought to be a, a much more clear way to indicate that you're in a dialogue. So here we go. Let me go talk to this NPC. I need to go find him first. There he is. So maybe it's not obvious that you can't move. Maybe I had to gray out all the movement buttons and maybe even have... What if I have a highlight window around here if you're if you're in a dialogue to, just to reinforce the fact that you should be interacting with this part of the game now. Because right now the only clues you get are that it flips to the dialogue tab for you and then it says response here and all the normal buttons go away. But um, that might not, not be too obvious, especially with these buttons still there. These should, I should just disable them. These buttons, I, they might be, they're, they're, um, their future is um, uncertain because I've had people tell me I should just drop these buttons completely. Highlighting the bottom and disabling the buttons. Yeah. Let's put that in here as a new issue. Uh, make it more obvious when a player is in a dialogue. So. Disable movement buttons. I add some highlighting around the chat area. I don't think the target audience will use those buttons at all. I was going to make the buttons optional so that you can turn them off in your preferences. Or maybe turn them on. Maybe they'd be off by default. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I was going to do what Mamba Dev was saying. It's a little tricky. I don't, I'm not. I'm not an expert at user experience, so I don't know what's the best way to like. Is it default on, default off? Do I prompt the user saying, "What do you do? You want to see movement buttons or not?" I don't. I don't know what the best way to do that is. So this is definitely a user experience improvement. Submit that. All right. Uh, let me resume checking this code in. This is adding a tooltip and disabling the add button. All right. Disable add entity button if no position is selected. Will the user be able to click the screen to move around? Uh, they can try right now. It just doesn't do anything. But if you're outside of a dialogue, you, yeah, you can click the screen to move. That's probably going to be the primary way that you'd interact it if this was on like a mobile device is you'd touch the screen in the direction you want to travel. But yeah, if you're if you're talking to um that's another thing is you can't it, it's not consistent. You can't click on a on a NPC. You actually you actually have to click a key on the keyboard right now. Or actually can I use the button here? I can use the button. So technically I can do mouse only, it's just awkward. But yeah, right now you click, you're in a dialogue you can't move. Cancel. Now I can move. Yeah, I need to make it more obvious what mode we're in, right? Got get. Okay. We fixed that. We fixed two more little bugs. Item stack splitting. This is... Yeah, gonna require another modal, I think. What I want I think what I think I wanted to do was if you have a stack of something and you drag it to another empty slot, that instead of immediately dragging it, it should pop up something giving you a slider, and the default should be move all of it, so you could just immediately dismiss it if you want. But that you could also optionally slide to the left to select less, and then it would split the stack. Yeah there, Cthulhu. So splitting the stack is something that the backend needs to support because the player shouldn't be allowed to just arbitrarily create new items. So it should be a command or an option in move, maybe an option in move inventory item where you can ask it to just move some of an item. Yeah, let's do that. So this will be um, modify the move inventory item client message or message from client to allow only 
some of the items in a stack, well, to specify that only some of the items in, in a stack should be moved. So then um, update server to support a uh, partial item move. And I suppose to I'll have to um, add item stack split modal. So those are the three steps, I think. So this should be easy. So it would be from the coordinator that if there's a, maybe a quantity included in the move inventory item, that it, it includes it in the um, command to the executor. I just need to find out how we handle that now. Move inventory item. This is what it looks like. There's a from slot to slot. So I, I suppose what I would do is add a quantity to that. What is this right here? New entity. Oh, I remember this. This is if you create a new item in the items panel here. If you're here and you like have the globals open and you hit new item, it actually creates one and tells it to move it into the, the inventory here. Uh, what do I want here? Sword or something. Right, it says, please create an item, and then when you're done, move it into the container. Right, that's when we drag and drop. And here are the tests. Okay. Here, so a client message will have a check. So you have to be logged in. Fine. Then we get where you're moving from and to and looking up stuff. And then what do, what, what do we actually do to move? Oh, it does an ECS action. Okay. So then there's not much for the executor to, to do right now. It's all in the coordinator for now. I need to fix this later because there is a bug in the game because the coordinator doesn't necessarily know what the current game state is. Only the executor truly knows that. So it could actually it could end up actually modifying an item that's already different and that can cause weird problems like Nui found out. <laughs> All right. Um let's look at the tests then. For that. Move inventory item to empty slot. Okay, let me um update the name for this. Snake upper. Move inventory item to empty slot. Move inventory full item, full stack to empty slot. And then we'll do partial stack. Yes. Move inventory partial stack to empty slot. Nui does find a lot of the problems. That's why Nui has so many points. Wait a minute. That number is not right. Hold on. Why does it only say 142? Could have sworn it was 192. Oh, it was Toulouse who had 198. Okay, yeah, both Toulouse and Nui you can see. Uh, you can't see because it's off the screen. They they find a lot of problems. <laughs> Confusing Nui and Toulouse. I know. Sorry, Toulouse. Should I give you a point for that? No. <laughs> I'm, probably, I'm probably a little bit too generous to Toulouse, right? Don't you guys think? 
198. So close to 200. <laughs> okay, partial stack. We're going to be, it's not gold. Let's, uh, sword. let's change it to gold entity. Yes. So we need to give it a quantity then. So realm server key item quantity. Let's say there's 20. Will the max stack matter? Maybe. I should do the whole thing. Yeah. It's gold money. There's 20 of it on 100 maximum. Okay. And then it's in the second slot and we move part of it to the third. S oh, uh, Oh, these are indexes, so it's zero based. So from the from the second to the first. So the, uh, now we'll include a quantity, fifteen, and I'm going to expect that it creates an entity, not just modifies the gold entity. It should create a new one. Ooh, this is a problem. I have to both create it and put it into the inventory. Hmm. Oh, you did? Wow. That's very generous of you, develop it. Okay, so that's actually not the change. This will be the um, new gold entity. Should I be more consistent here and say this is the old gold entity? Old gold. And it's going to the third slot, not the first. So it's going to show up there, but it doesn't exist yet. Uh. Really needs to create the entity, and then once it's created, then store it in the player's inventory. Develop it. Just gifted a sub to Nui. Wow. Overly generous of you, I think. I shouldn't say. Sorry, take that. I take back the over. That's very generous of you. Thank you very much. Even more love. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much, develop it. So now, now you can do the haze again. Nui. Uh, probably because you help out both my in my stream and Adam's stream, Nui. You're just a very helpful person. And people like helpful people. Okay, I can't do this the way I've been doing the other stuff in the coordinator because the coordinator can't create entities. I explained it a little bit better? Yeah. That's surprising because I usually don't explain things very well. <sighs> this is making me think that this inventory management stuff shouldn't be the role of the coordinator at all. We should just be telling the executor to do it. It'd be so much simpler here. What if I um, do it this way? So we'll phase in having the executor do this stuff by um, making this a different message. That if there's a quantity field, we'll have the executor handle it differently. So it won't be a modify component. In fact, it won't be any... Would it be an ECS message? I suppose it would be. Yeah, we can just say move item. 
There we go. We'll let the executor figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You were helping out yesterday in Adam's channel. Yeah, and the point total like wouldn't be so high if you didn't help out here a lot. So I think I'm coming up with whole new keys here. So this would be um, move item. It should just be reflected by this stuff, right? Let's make it generic. Let's have it move item holder. No, don't even need to know the holder. We just need to know the entity, right? Entity. And the entity is the... Um, so I don't even need this old gold. It could just be gold. Gold. Move item new holder. And it would be um, player entity. And I guess we need to know um, the path, right? Path. And that would be um, items dot... Yeah, path and then index. Two. Actually, it's this key, not the word items. And then it would be uh, move item quantity. 15. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of keys that don't exist yet. We're going to define them now. Move item entity E. New holder H. Path P. Index I. Entity. No, quantity, I mean Q. Okay, it took it took it a while. Build this. And this will be we're phasing in, so it's gonna be triggered by having a quantity in the from item. Do this without breaking any anything. I forgot to say hi to someone. My stream helper is telling me it was a while ago too. Hold on, let me find it. Entis, I forgot to say hi, like 20 minutes ago. My apologies. Where are you in chat? There you are. Oh, right, we were talking. I just didn't re realize I hadn't said hi to you. There, I fixed it. <laughs> I think it's already been suggested that my stream helper here not, not just show a little icon here, but maybe blink or... Give me a little tone or something to remind me. That's assuming that I continue doing that. Okay, so run this. This is the wrong test. This is the test I want to run. Fails, right? <clears throat> so it ends up generating a, a modify component to move the entire stack one slot over. So we're going to have to fix this. Or what am I saying? That that's what we expect. This is new behavior right here. All right. The um How come I don't see the source file this is in? Did I not pin it? Yeah, I didn't pin it. Here we go. So here it is. I think I just want to delegate the entire thing to the coordinator. So 
so then really I'm just going to be constructing this wait um, I had to be careful I think this lookup item slot is something we should do No, wait a minute, no, this is wrong. How do we know if the player is allowed to do it or not? Yeah, okay. We don't know. I guess the simplest implementation would be the best. So, lookup item slot. So we would do this first. I think. What does it actually do, though? It gets the holder, sure. This might be out. This might be um old though. Okay, this is wrong. I mean, this that, that's the wrong thing to look at. You need 320 more mana, it could force me to pet the beast. <laughs> Gotta do it before the beast decides to wake up and, and move off. Yeah, we, we shouldn't be going straight to the ECS like this to determine whether or not this should be allowed. I think I just want to grab the uh the witch field and the kind field right if kind is container do we even look at which i don't think so Yeah, it just goes into here, right? Oh, there's key and subkey. So key is kind and subkey is which. So it's either container or it's items, right? Or equipment. And if it's equipment, then it's to be which which piece of equipment. All right, I think I know what I want then. Ah, uh, back, back up, back, 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 back. This one. I should just cut it off early. I should say if from descriptor, well, in here, if from descriptor, has quantity, right? Then this is, we're going to handle this in the new way. So we're going to end up returning from here early. But we're going to be um, queuing a command to the executor. Yeah, so it's going to look like one of these.
So make an ECS action. I don't need to do the action will actually be one of these. An array with one action in it, which is going to be a new one we haven't made yet called move item. And then um, we're going to fill in the keys that the test needs. All of these ones go here. With all of these, don't need that prefix. And delete all that, and all that, and all this. All right, so item entity. Actually, we don't even know what entity it is, so it shouldn't be item entity. It should just be um, from path and to path, right? Yeah, let's just do from path to path. So from path should be inventory to path inventory. And this should be from index to index. Let the executor figure it out, right? Yes. Are you going to rewrite your backend in Rust? Uh, hey there. Not Pikrua? I don't know. Maybe after I learn Rust and I'm convinced that it's like way better than C++? I don't know. Rust might be like so much better than C++ that I say, man, I just got to rewrite it. So this isn't technically correct either. Should I just shouldn't I just forward the whole dang thing? I think I just should. Hacker news is a I know this that that joke has been going around like rewriting things in Rust. I don't quite understand it, but I figure that's because I don't know Rust. Okay, I think I fundamentally want to move all the logic to the executor anyway. So if the coordinator is just mo is just moving information, then I think I just want to take these objects and pre-construct them. Const auto from item equals that. And then this is to item. So again, from item to item. And then um, we'll just keep this simple. Move item from and to. Get rid of all this junk. From item, from item. To item, to item. Key names from and to ft actually t is already typed so we'll say let's just mm, from and to sure why not okay keeping it simple So this is move item from move item to to descriptor. And that's it. So then the coordinator, all it does right now is if it's got this quantity figure, then it's just forwarding the message to the to the executor to handle. Which is where it should have been all along, I believe. 
So this will pass right away and hopefully it doesn't break anything else. So let's run all the other ones in this suite. And that sh then that shifts it to shift the work to the executor. I think I'll have to have some redundancy in code for to start with, which is fine. Um, so I'm surprised it's not in my buffer list, but shouldn't I? Oh, because it was, uh, no, yeah, shouldn't there be, like, items? Yeah, this thing. Okay, so just a new test. We'll steal from some old test. This will be, um, move items. Move items, partial stack. To empty slot. Okay. How does this add item work? Okay, it can have a quantity. So gold 20. Sure, so we'll model it after what we're actually doing. Player entity, previous state. Yes. Next state will be that has gold here, well. What do I expect for new entity? What do my tests do when there's a new entity created? If only it was that simple that I could just search for it. These are all just modifies and moves. Maybe under entity management we'll find it. Oh, here we go. There'll be an, an ID in the execution results. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, no, that's for creating a player. What happens when we do create entity? Right, there's an entity. Got it. And this expects one Y because there weren't any entities entities before that. Is that what we're always going to expect? Can I ask the entity components? I can get next entity ID. That's what I should do. I should be doing that in a lot of these tests. And let me see. Yeah. Okay, that's actually not what I expected, but we'll, I'm going to use this. So after we do all of these, then I'm going to say const auto new gold is whatever the next entity ID is. And this is old gold. And then we'll be able to compute what is the... Um, if we create all our entities up front, then I can actually do this up front too, right? Yeah, let's just order like this player, old gold, new gold. Then we have old, old gold and new gold. Mobilize. The command is to move item, the um, move item from. Oh, wait, we're missing. It, it's not going to be able to find the player, is it? Okay, so. I need to back up a little bit. The test here should have expected that. Right, so we need to say um, context. Let's so move item. What if I just keep it simple and call it context?
Or how about we have a player? And if the player is missing, then it's not a it's not a there's no player context. But if there is, then it's the player's um ID or character entity. Let's make it the the player's character entity. Yeah. Player P. Okay, got it. So, code needs to match that, right? Player. So, technically, I should have done that outside here. Yeah. Because an admin might use this too. Alright, so, up out here... We'll say if uh, that means I should pre construct this const auto action equals that if not is admin then action and then this key here equals player ID. Oh. I guess I have to get their record. Okay. I'll do that. If it's not an admin, then with the player's profile, we're um, getting their... basically just storing the character entity in the action. Like that. And then that gets removed. So, we're moving an item from one place to another. If it's not an admin, then with the player's profile, take their character entity and store it in the action. I can won't let me assign that. Because that can't be a const. So now it will let me assign it. And then we're going to take that action, put it here. And then queue it. All right. So then I don't want the player entity at all. I want the player ID, right? No. It, the player sends the message so that their identity gets turned into their entity ID. Got it. All right. So then back to the executor items. Here we go. So here it comes in as um, player. And this will be... Um, player entity at this point. Yes. Okay, and then the, I need from and to. And this, let's model it after this, what this test had here. This stuff. From is that. And to is that. So from their inventory slot one, move 15 of it to their slot two. Okay, and then expect the player's store. The store has a player state, also needs to have two items in it. Item old gold and the new gold, right? The old gold is going to um, have what in it? Just a name and a quantity? Because I was keeping it simple. Name is gold. The, the executive is going to start caring about quantity, right? So I don't want to break old tests, so let me let me have an add item with max quantity. Also, it needs to care about the type. Okay. 
Where is this declared? Add item. Let's extend this. Add add full item. So all of the required fields here. Type quantity max quantity. There we go. And then define it here. Common add full item. Create an ent entity and create its um, item component, and it's got a name, a type, a quantity, and a max quantity. Okay, and I'm going to use that in this new test here. Add full item, gold, money, 20, 100. All right, and then um, right. So the type will be here too. The quantity and the max quantity will be here too. A hundred. So this should be this should go to five, and then the new one will appear with fifteen in it. There we go. Still don't have enough. You still don't have enough. You will soon, though, right? Is the accumulation not very okay? Well, you have to go. Hold on. We'll um we'll pet the cat just for you. Develop it. Hold on. He's pretending to be asleep. Can you believe that? Bye, develop it. Have a r awesome weekend. You said 15 at almost the same time? 15. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. <laughs> yeah, free pet. Well, he had to go, you know? All right. That's the only thing that changes, right? And then, yeah, there'll be an inventory that you used to have 20 gold in your inventory. You still have 15. I mean, you still have 20. It'll just be moved around. Yes, that's what we expect. This is going to be the harder one to do. Because <laughs> essentially I'm migrating the logic that figures out how to move items. I'm moving it from the coordinator to the executor, where it should have been from, from day one. I guess it, it's not too bad if I just copy the code over. I'll just have to then probably end up, I'll end up wanting to have a lot of the copies of the unit test too. Does that mean, that, that means I'm going to want to have um, other tests that, that, yeah, we'll have alternatives to this. There needs to be one where they, they request to move it and, it's, and there's nothing there, or they're not allowed to move it, right? Let me get the tests, the names down first. To do. Assert true false. Okay, move items partial stack to non-empty stack. Non-empty slot incompatible stack let's just say two incompatible stack move items well I, I want a full stack right full stack to empty slot partial stack to incompatible stack and then there should be partial stack to compatible stack all fit and then there should be a partial fit and then there should be just attempts to move items that you don't have move items um, no move items no actual items and do I also want to catch we also want to catch if the index is wrong 
move items uh, so, uh, from index bad. Move items to index bad. And then we should have move move items to actually should, instead of saying bad it should, index bad it should just be bad index move items to um, bad path right shouldn't that be path not kind no it should be there should be both a, a kind and a witch maybe it's time for me to um, update that what if we call it just path yeah just call it path that means that back here in the coordinator we should expect path uh I'm in the wrong place. How oh, come I don't see it? Is it right here? Yes. Oh, I already put it here. Oh, right. This one didn't actually care. Okay, it doesn't care. Got it. So then, do I include the index in the path then? No, this is the path to the array that's holding items. And if it's a player, the path is... Um, a very, very specific path the player can do. They can do container, they can do items, and they can do equipment, dot, and then the type of equipment slot. If it's an admin, what will it be? then there is no context without without a um, either source entity or source... Uh, actually, I guess it would always be entity, right? I guess then the path would just be the the entity? Okay, what if I use a more generic term here? Description. Descriptor. Or slot. Item. Uh, I think actually if it's in, from an administrator, it would be entity. I'll do it later. From bad, bad index to bad index to bad path. And then we would say to incompatible path. So if we try to like equip your gold or something like that. Does that cover everything? Probably does. So I'll just leave those open. I'll do those later. I really only care about the success case right now. Move items partial to empty slot. Oh, hello kitty, you're awake now. It's licking his pause and scratching is behind his ear are you cleaning behind your ear wow he hardly ever get him he hardly ever does that okay So this is going to fail, right? It's not going to do anything. No previous inventory. Items didn't move at all. Okay, yeah. It's because that command uh, move item doesn't actually go anywhere in the executor right now. So this is a completely new function. Create entity on ECS create entity right here. So we're making a new row. Move item. 
I'm wondering if this is appropriate, though. Because these are very specific to the Entity Component System. And will items always be specific to the Entity Component System? Maybe I need a new command. Actually, I think I will have a new command because when I move from JSON to binary, um, it'll be easier. Okay, so that means I'm backing up yet another step. I need to actually make a command to represent what we're doing. So commands test has to change. Commands tests. For having a new kind of command. Alright, what's this command gonna be called? It's gonna be called move item. Cool, and then we're going to basically copy the information that was from the other test. Take two steps forward and three steps back. It's like dancing. So there is going to be a player ID, and if it's zero, it's the admin, right? And then, yeah, I need to encode this information differently, right? Path should just be like a string identifier. So there should be like a path here. Did I? I well, that um, the current task is... Um, oh yeah, you're right. Thank you. One, two, cha-cha-cha. 199 points to lose? <laughs> so we're adding... Well, this is part... This is in order to do... I... Item stack movement, right? Or item stack splitting, but really it's... It's refactoring in, in preparation for this, right? Refactoring how... Requests to move items in the game are handled internally. That's actually what I'm doing right now. Anything for points? You only need one more! One more point! So this would be like from path items Hey Void Compville, how are you doing? Better than accumulating technical debt to maintain velocity? That sounds like a scrum nightmare. Equipment dot main hand. And then um there should be a index from index one to index two or something from path from path yeah the commands right now are all json anyway so it's just it's just really packaging the whole thing up as a json object Was that it? Oh, there's a quantity. Quantity. If, um, one. Uh, let's make it a different, let's say five. There should also be um, room for, when I use this as an administrator, I'm going to want an entity. Yes, so let's include that. Const int from entity, but it could be zero. And the same thing with the two entity. And I think I will, the way I want to do this is if the from path is empty, then we're actually moving the from entity itself. Otherwise, if there's a path here, then this becomes a container and we're moving, we're moving the thing that's in it. So to entity um, 
42. The actual m m semantics is irrelevant here. I just We're just testing that we can encode the things from entity to entity. All right, and then encoding. So it's much the same thing, only in reverse here. It's that all of these have um, command arrow in front. And then we expect this stuff back out the other end. With the command arrow in front. All right, and then I need to actually define this. So, a couple places to do that. Outside here, we need to actually add a move item. And in the host, we have to register a command type. Move item. Then I need to make a header for it way at the top include commands uh what to copy i'll copy ecs move item move item command this represents a server command which is used to request that some items be moved from one place to another in the game. I should also support, I should be forward looking and also support moving an item into the world. Shouldn't I? From someone's inventory into the world. And we can do that with drop also. So. That should be, um, I guess that could just be path, path world. But then we might need coordinates. Actually, then I think it would just be, we could just have a JSON object for that. Yeah. What if the paths are JSON objects? Actually, then I can combine path and index. Uh, going, I mean, it's actually going back towards what I was doing before with slot descriptors. I hate doing. I hate using JSON here, though, because I'm trying to remove JSON from these commands. I guess if the entity is zero, we could conclude that we're moving it into the world. So maybe the path could be the world. But right now it's a string. Well, actually, hold on. We can say if the two or the from entities are zero, then we don't need to either, if, if the from entity is zero, then we're not, um, it's not moving from anywhere. And if it two entity is zero, it's not moving to anywhere specific. So it's into or, or out of, yeah. So if from entity is zero, then we're not removing it from an inventory. If two entity is zero, then we're not adding it to an inventory. So that'll support moving things between in the inventory and the world. We could even do things like that um, if it was orphaned and now we assign it to a container. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's how I'll do it. Mo to be moved from one place to another in the game, right? So. If an entity reference is zero, the item is um, either being well. If an entity reference is zero, 
I should be, I should say if. I, I should comment that down here, shouldn't I? Yeah. So there's server and client. Uh, no, there isn't. Not server and client. It's just player. I should be copying from another command that makes sense. Pol like policy consent. Yeah, it just has a player's identifier. All right. This is the identif the unique identifier of the player. Let's say if a player requested the item move, this is the unique identifier of the player. Otherwise, well, if if zero, the move was requested by the game or an administrator. All right, and then I don't need client ID. I don't need actions. It's all new variables here. From entity, so int from entity. So if zero, Actually, it, ha it, it can't be zero. It has to be zero. If it's zero, then it's invalid command. Um, this, in, this is the unique identifier of either the item to move or the container currently holding the item. And then we'll have it um, reflected here in the next variable, right? The from path. This indicates the source of the item. If if uh, empty, uh, from entity is the entity is the item entity to move to be moved. Otherwise, from entity refers to the container currently holding the entity. And I should also say um, this uh, the Mm. I should also say this is only used um, if player ID D is zero. If player ID is zero, this is the unique identifier either the item to move or the container currently holding the item. Because if it player ID is player ID is not zero, then from path and index fully describe what to move. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. And then there's a from index. This is the index of the slot of the container slot. I can't type right now. Container slot currently holding the item. It is only valid if from path is not empty. This would be empty if if it's the um if we're moving the item directly and then we we would just look up where it is. Yeah, okay, and then we need the the two side of this. Uh, okay. So the two is always going to be the container unless we're moving it into the world. So it's sl slightly differently. It's slightly different. If player ID is zero, this is the unique identifier of the container in which to store the item. If zero, the item is um, being is 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 being placed outside any container. Hopefully, in the world somewhere. Otherwise, it's going to become an orphan. 
It's, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna get lost. All right, this okay. This is two path two index. This indicates the destination of the item. This indicates the destination. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Would it ever be empty? I guess it would be empty if two entity is zero. I think that's all we need to say. It indicates the destination of the item. Well, actually, let's say indicates the destination container of the item. That's what it really is. This is the index of the container sl slot in which to store the item. So yeah, this will be zero and this will be empty if that is zero. Okay, I'm done. And then this is called move item, not ECS. All right, and then um, there needs to be a corresponding CPP file. And then uh, actually there's a commands HTTP needs to include the header. Move item. Source commands, move item. Okay. Just initialize them all from the constructor. I really should be copying from one of these, yeah. from entity, from path, from index, and that's a size T, and then two, right? And I am done. Return move item, and then we can we de we um assemble it from its pieces. Two okay done, and I probably need to list that in the make file too. I think I forgot that one. Way up here. Right, so I have the include for move item. I probably don't have the source for move item. Yeah. Here it would go. And then now I should be able to at least reconstruct the build system and it should build some of this junk. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see where the compiler errors are. That should say from index. Oh, I forgot quantity. Okay, let's add quantity. Uh, this, well, put it here, quantity. This is the number of items to move from the source item stack. Should I say something like if zero move the entire stack or do I does it matter? Don't think it matters. So I need to include that. Quantity. Quantity. Well, there's no policy version. All 
All right, so I suppose I can run the test first. A lot of command tests, so though. These run really quickly. Boom. Less than a second. This is still broken, right? All right. Okay, so then that means on ECS, right? The, we need to add the new command handler here. Move item. Okay, just put it here. On move item. The ex execute the move item command by checking the validity of the request and if valid. I guess say move the requested item. Moving the requested item in the game. In the game, in the game. All right, so this will be a move item command. Now, how do we handle the move item command? I think I want to, what I want to do is take what was in the coordinator right here, and start to move stuff over. So I I'm going to need a copy of this lookup item slot thing. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. And the is admin will be if the player ID is zero or not, right? Oh, this is, this is wrong now. Shoot. Ah, man. Yeah, this is all wrong. We don't expect it should be a move item, or the act will be a move item now. Yeah. So it's not actions anymore. It's um player ID. We're having a player do this, right? Player entity? If, if there's a player entity, then I need to actually have a, a player. Create test or test user. How do I do this? Or am I going to translate it to a player entity? A character entity first. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> what do I generally do in the executor here? Like, what does common have for me? Do I need a login player? I don't think so. Yeah, add test user, that's what it is. Add test... I don't do it in this whole suite? Wow. Okay, let's do it. Let's look for it here. Add test user not logged in. I guess that's what I've been doing. Hey there, Tim. How are you doing? My ears are popping for some reason. Right, so player is a test user not logged in and add a character. Do I, I don't even need a tile. We can do without tile, right? Without tile. Initial values is what their inventory is, right? Yeah, so that's this stuff. So then I don't need that. So I'm going to do this after I do that, right? Okay, so.
Oh, we get their entire player record. Right. So uh, actually, that can remain player. So this is player ID then. Uh, player dot character. Oh, no, I don't need to do that. Wait, what am I doing here? This should be previous state. Next date. Put that up here. This should be... Uh, let's okay. This so this has to move around here <laughs> because of how the declaration order here and this previous state goes here. So create a stack of gold. Say that that's uh, this can move up here. Create a player. Say that this is what the player's state is. So create add the character to them. Then figure out what the ID of the new gold will be and figure out what the new state of the player will be. Then create... I don't need to do this anymore because that's what's done by this thing, right? Yeah. Then um, mobilize and then this should be player.id. Actually, and it goes straight, straight up here. And this is not an ECS command, this is a move item command. How it goes around here? Adding a new command in the game to, um, actually this is to do two things at once really. To support moving partial item stacks in the game. So up until now when you um, move items, you just drag it and you can't, so I have a stack of 91 fireworks here, but I can't split it into like two stacks of 40 something, 45 and 46 like I would like to, so I'm, I'm going to add something where if you drag a stack and there's more than one thing, it'll pop up something that says, how many of those do you want to move? And you can have a slider or something. And when you hit OK would, uh, and you didn't move all of them, it would split it into two two entities. So that created a complication where we're taking one entity and technically making two entities out of it. And that's one thing I'm, I'm working on adding. And then in the process of adding it, I realized if we're doing something as complicated as creating a new entity, I might as well have all of the item movement stuff go where it should have gone from the beginning, which is in the executor component of the game. So um, now there's now a formal command called move item that's, that'll specify um, what we're moving. And um, the executor is going to figure out can it be moved. So this will fix an, a, a bug that's in the, been in the game for a while that Nui found where if you're fast enough in dropping an item and picking it up, you can end up with two references to the same item in your inventory. So that's because the coordinator slightly lags the executor. And so when it's looking at what's in the entity component system and making decisions on what to ask the executor to, to change in the entity component system, it could have a, a stale image or, or an out-of-date concept of what's there. And the, the executor doesn't actually check, so it'll blindly create two references to the same item. They move into the executor, the executor is always in sync with the game state, and so it can both look at what's in the ECS and look at what was asked and then see, well, does that make sense? Well, yeah. It doesn't make sense for you to pick up that item because you already picked it up, so don't create a second reference to it. <laughs> so um, fixing that bug and then implementing item stack splitting at the same time. So this new command, move item... Right, player ID. So we don't need a from entity. It's going to be just uh, from path, right? And that'll be um, just this, the inventory. Move item command from index is one. Move item command to path is the same inventory. And then, oh, oh yeah, I only have a half an hour left before I have to um, end stream one, go be a chauffeur for a while, and then I'll start stream two for the day after I come back. It looks like I'm probably going to use up all my time doing this and then not get to um, deployment or in Discord integration this stream. Quantity 15. So that replaces all this mess. Then we commit the move item command and expect that. 
So player entity should be player dot character entity. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. Player dot character entity. Correct. On move item must return a value. Yes, we haven't done that yet. Um, executor this should return something in general what are we returning from on ecs i think it returns the results and the result starts as an empty object so that's what we're going to do plan for four or five things finish one or two it was initially planned two things, it balloons into eight things, and then I get three of those done. <laughs> so a similar, a similar phenomenon. All right. Um, the um, coordinator needs to change too. Where are ECS tests? There they are. Right, so when we ask to move an inventory item with that, which has a quantity in it, we're, we're going to now expect it to be a move item command. And then we're going to um, expect equal uh, player dot player um, is test user, expect test user ID for command player ID and expect um, the inventory for command from path and expect one for the from index Two path goes to index two. What else? And the quantity is 15. Fifteen. Yes. Is that it? I think so. Falling down our habit hole type of days. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you wind up super rewarding to get things done. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bag of holding. No, it's a back burner of holding. <laughs> Infinite space on that back burner. Or it's kind of like the global containers in my game. Run out of slots? You just make more slots. <laughs> The number of slots is just a number, right? <laughs> or like an array in a program, you just extend the array as needed. This built, right? All right, so I should be able to test at least certain parts of this. Like this test should pass now, right? No, why not? Because there's an exception, okay. Oh, it, I didn't change the code yet. Okay, so good, good catch. Yes, so this won't be doing a um, ECS, it'll be doing a move item. Move item. Player ID equals... Uh... Oh, it's different here, right? Let's fill in the things we do know. I move item uh, from path is from descriptor what? Oh, here's where I have to do a little bit of the code I was doing in lookup item slot. I gotta do this junk here. Yeah. So I gotta, um... I gotta say, it's not sub key, it's if from descriptor either has a which or it doesn't. If it has a which, then um, we're... We're doing uh, this junk. I 
And it's not slot info, it's... It's just this path part here. It's a from path. And it's not key, it's um, from descriptor uh, kind. And then which, there we go. And this needs to be an arrow. Okay, so if uh, it's still not right, what? Oh, because we need to say it's a string. Interpret as a string the kind field, and then add a dot, and then add the which. And then uh, if it doesn't have a which, then we don't add a dot. Okay, and then I need to do the same thing for the two path. So I'm just going to be lazy here and just make it... Um, a copy pasta, and then I need quantity. So we already verified it has one, so we're just going to put it in here. Quantity equals interpret as a size t from descriptor quantity. I think that's what I want, and then. Oh, right, I need to do this part. If it's from an admin... Actually, uh... Yeah, if it's, if it's not from an admin, then we're filling in the move item player ID. Equals the... Actually, I don't need the width then, do I? Do I? Player ID. Easy peasy. Because we got the player ID. And then I don't need that, and then this is a move item, and we're done. Almost. Oh, I forgot to do the index. Yeah, okay. So that is where? Index, okay. Move item from index is size t from descriptor index. And then the two as well. Wait a minute, what? Why was there a login? Oh, right, because they requested it. Why is it empty string? Why is, okay, I have, some of these are wrong. What did I do wrong? The index is wrong. Why is the index wrong? Two item. The from index is one, but we expected two. Hold on, 1422. Oh, that should be two. Oh, and I have path, not kind. Right, because I want to sort of unify that. So yeah, so then, okay. Then I did a whole bunch of, uh, this, a whole bunch of this for no reason. This should have just done a um, from path. Yeah, it should just be this. From path is from descriptor path. And be done with it. None of this junk. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> and this is to path is from to descriptor path. Now it's much simpler the way it should be. Simple code is usually the right code. <laughs> Complex code is usually wrong, simple code is usually right, and we're right. Okay, so basically basically the, what the coordinator does is, for this new behavior, if you include a quantity, 
in the um, move I inventory item message, it's going to use the new command type. Otherwise, this is the um, this is the legacy code. So with the new code, it's going to delegate the authority and do everything to the, in the executor. So we're just buttoning up, we're packaging up all the input from the user, not even validated yet, just taking it from the user and putting it into the command. And then we rely on the executor actually validating it here. So what I want to do is kind of take the code I had here and move it into the executor. So I'm literally going to copy this and paste it here and then make it work with the executor <laughs> how am i do how am i going to do this i don't know we'll make it work okay so i guess i want to reverse this in the, in the end it's going to be if command player i no no i don't need to reverse it just say if it's equal to 0 then it's from the administrator's point of view and this from and to is what A slot info. So there's going to be a little bit of duplication of stuff as we move from the coordinator to the executor. So I'm going to need to copy lookup item slot and I'm going to need to copy slot info. This is from the anonymous namespace. So lookup item slot will probably need the game state. Because inside the game state is the um, components. And yeah, so only we'll game state added to all these things. All right. Now what's slot info? It's a structure defined in the outer interface even. Okay, so I guess we're duplicating it for now. Yeah. Um, actually, hold on. Maybe this should just be promoted completely out of the coordinator. That would probably be, that would probably be the right thing to do. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to duplicate this header and call it slot info. And I'm going to update this to be pragma once and say this is slot info. And copy right now, because it's a new file. And then um, let's pretend we don't need any headers. And we're going to delete everything except for slot info. So everything here and up is destroyed. This gets promoted one level up to be a top-level structure. Everything after it gets destroyed. Remove that guard. Okay, so we need string, and we need JSON value, and we need an unordered set. Include JSON value, include string. This is .hpp. And include unordered... Unordered set. And um, it's not going to like me until I add this file to the make file. So I might as well do that now. The very top level of the headers. It's include realm server slot info. And then build that. Hey there, Crumpet. How are you today? All right. I'm wondering if that doesn't go, if that's not going away because nothing else includes it. So if I want to include it from the right places, it would be um, probably here, right? If we're going to get rid of slot info from here. This will still reference it, right? So I'm going to want to include slot info. And while we're here, let's um, do improve the header guard, and then make this to to the current year. Remove that, and then um, try to build again. Gotta leave in like fifteen minutes. 
Waiting for a shipment of caffeine to arrive soon. Waiting for it to be processed in the school postal system. Wait a minute, you're getting caffeine shipped to you directly? You're not joking? Wow, okay. <laughs> oh, is the caffeine part of something else like tea or coffee? Or is it like raw caffeine? Because raw caffeine is like deadly dangerous. Okay. Oh, it's an energy trick. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's it's caffeine in, inside of something else. That's better. <laughs> caffeine powder. Yeah, it's dangerous stuff. Not to be messed with. Okay, size T. It's nice to include standard def. Most compilers will forgive you if you don't. Okay, actually, it has a method, so that means I'm going to need source for it, too. And I should probably have a test for it. Source. Yeah, because it's a top-level thing, isn't it? Source slot info dot cpp. Hold on, wait a minute. Where are most of my source files? Oh, this is under headers. Crap. That's why it looked funny. Okay, it looks better here, yes. Okay, I just need this as a template. Slot info, and then um, slot info. And I guess I'll say class. It's not really a class, though, is it? Include uh, slot info and nothing else. And then uh, I need to find that where where it went. This accepts item type because it it now gets moved. Here it is. It gets moved to here. It is now a top level thing. Build. Okay, that's an old error. All right. We're in anonymous namespace, so yeah, this will need to um, the realm server. Actually, there's a whole going to be a whole bunch of compiler errors. What if I, for now, just um, comment this out and get the other stuff to, to compile first? I don't try to do too many things at once. Oh, okay. It's just going to work now. <laughs> all right. And one of my kids has used up almost all of their mobile data for the month already. Good thing we have limits. Run out of mobile data, then no more watching YouTube on your phone, away from Wi-Fi. All right, um... Actually, I can just, I can work on this again then, right? I can comment this back out. Uh, so to get that, I'm going to need to include it. Slot info HPP. All right, and then um, we're going to need to move that. Well, right now... I think it's within the context of the coordinator, right? But does it need to be? Does a whole bunch of entity component system junk. We have cheap fifty gigabyte plans. Yeah, you guys are lucky. Hey there, Batcraft. I gotta end soon because I gotta go, I gotta go be a chauffeur. I'm looking at this stuff, thinking, do I have enough time to do this now, or should I find a good stopping point now? I think I should find a good stopping point.
I should just say that after I after I become after I am done being a chauffeur for the day, I'll come back and move this lookup item slot function so that I can use it from the executor here. And basically migrating this code from the core editor to the executor in, in, in steps. So I guess this lookup item slot ought to be a sh something I can share between the coordinator and the executor until it's moved over. So a good place to put it would be to make it a member function of um, slot info, right? Maybe a static member of slot info. I'll have to think about that. But I'll do that after I come back from the break. I'm sorry, Batcraft. But yeah, my schedule is kind of, sort of weird. Um, there's a break between these two because I got to go pick up one of my kids from school. So, but when I come back in like an hour and a half, I'll, I, I should be able to resume again. So that'll be two o'clock my time, 2200 hours UTC. So yeah, I'm going to resume the work on, th on this. This whole thing is for doing item stack splitting. And so... I'm doing this end right here, updating the server to support a partial item move. And I'm doing it in a forward-looking way so that it's done in the correct part of the game server. So hopefully get that done when I come back. Add the modal di add the modal screen so where you can drag the slider to say how much of the item you want to move. And then get that working and then deploy the latest code into production. And if I have any spare time, working on Discord integrations. And then there's some stretch goals if I really, um, if I get all of that. This will actually probably be the the... The bulk of the, if, of the stretch time anyway is all, there's just so much to do on the Discord integration. I probably won't finish it, but yeah. So I'll come back to this. Let me go raid somebody so I can get going. I wonder if Adam's still on. Maybe we'll just raid Adam. Yeah, we'll just raid Adam. So if you haven't heard about Adam, then I don't know why, but uh, he's ho the host of a new edutainment show, demonstrating the process of learning, and this is day two of him learning how to make a Nintendo ROM. He had Zorkenheimer on his stream yesterday, giving him a crash course on how to make a ROM for the Nintendo Entertainment System. If you missed that, he has his VOD, of course. It, it was like an information overload five-hour tutorial from Zorkenheimer to Adam. And so I think right now Adam's on his own trying to progress, use the knowledge he gained, and actually make a game for Nintendo. So pretty cool stuff. He's doing a lot of assembly today. So I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. I'll be back, like I said, in about a little bit over an hour and a half. Until then, let's go say hi to Adam. All right. So hope you guys have rest uh, a great rest of your day if I don't see you and an awesome weekend and I'll see you later. Thank you so much. Catch you later Toulouse and Slickfur and Nui and everybody else. Bye.